Hello and welcome into the Nixverse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here or you've been here before and haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would greatly appreciate that, along with your thumbs ups and drop your comments. All right, well, we just, I'm going to recap the game uh, that the Knicks just had against the Toronto Raptors in Toronto in an empty arena because Canada's not, is, I think they limiting limiting uh, guests to a thousand, and I think the Toronto just decided not to have any fans except for family. So it was interesting. It was an interesting dynamic. Um, Mike Breen talked a lot about it for some reason, almost like as if he forgot about last year, <laughs> the way he was talking about it. But I'll tell you, last year does seem like a blur right now, especially when you see what the Knicks have been doing this season. We lost again. We lost again, 120 to 105. And uh, that score is a little closer than it was really at one point in that third quarter or in the beginning of the fourth quarter. It was, the game pretty much got out of hand. I believe the largest lead was up to like uh, 25 points or something. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, 25 points, 25 points. We actually had a one point lead at one point. I'm sure that was in the first quarter. But look, we really got to look at it was it was the points off turnovers that killed us. Ah, turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Once again, they crush us. And we also did get beat on the boards as well. We only had 30 rebounds they had 44. So that deficit is uh, crushing. The actual free throw attempts were pretty much even. So that's uh, that, was, that was pretty good. Uh, they got one extra three point make over than us uh, with two less attempts. So that was actually kind of close in general, but it really came down to, they destroyed us in the paint, 52 to 36. Ouch, 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 ouch. But I jumped ahead a little bit here because this was, this was on the screen when I, when I scrolled through it, I forgot to reset it and put it here. Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin had a very nice game for him, much better than the, the previous game. Uh, he started his second start, uh, because Julius Randle is out for COVID uh, and health uh, and safety protocol reasons. And, uh, but before I get to that, I wanted to show this tweet that uh, Alder Almo put out uh, right after the game ended. Uh, this is the post game. Uh, quote, just going into the game when you're shorthanded, your margin of error is small. Tom Thibodeau, while adding their focus was on defense, but didn't get it done. I'm gonna come back to this whole defense thing, but Yes, let's talk about it. The Knicks were totally depleted, shorthanded. Not only are we missing our All-NBA power forward, Julius Randle, and we're missing our, uh, you know, fantastic Derrick Rose point guard who will be gone through uh, at least mid-February. We were also without Kemba once again. Yep. And we were without Mitch Robinson. Mitch Robinson wasn't in the paint to do his thing. On both ends, Taj started, and uh, I want to talk about this a little bit right now. I, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of this focus on defense issue. I, what I saw tonight, I mean, yes, Toronto, of course, has scored 120 points, and that's uh, you know way more than any team should allow. But Fred Van Vliet, he just went off in that third quarter, just became a monster in that third quarter. I think he finished with 35 points. Let's see, let's jump ahead here. Yeah, he finished with 35 points, shot seven of 13 from the three-point line. And some of those were just unbelievable, just curled around a screen, just hoisted it up, swish. He was a beast. He was a total beast. Uh, five rebounds himself, five assists. Uh, he just, uh, I mean, I got to say, I, I love when uh, guys, undrafted guys, really turn themselves into something special. And that's what he's done. Congrats to, uh, to Fred. That's fantastic. Uh, the rest of the team, yeah, I mean, they they played pretty, pretty well offensively. They definitely punished us in the paint because we just didn't have size in the paint. And they have really interesting size all around. They're all very long. They're very similar size players. Which then brings me to, to this thought. Why don't you get a more creative offense? Why don't you lean into your advantages? I I don't understand. This was I, I saw very little other than that uh, behind the back bounce pass that RJ did on that uh, uh, fast break to Obi. I saw very little creativity in this team. 
Very little. This, the, just the same kind of boring offensive sets that we've been seeing all year. I, you know, it, it, it's a little disappointing to me. You know, Deuce got the start, but he was pulled really fast because uh, he got burned a little bit. But then he didn't start in the, in the second half. Burke started in place of him, who had a nice first half, but he immediately picks up his fourth foul and has to get taken out. And then we don't, we still don't see Deuce. We saw IQ come in. Now, IQ, uh, IQ struggled. He struggled. I mean, he only, one of four from the three-point line once again. His three-point shot is not there. Uh, often he'd pick up his dribble. Uh, he made some uh, kind of uh, some some bad turnovers. I mean, the whole team made bad turnovers. But none worse than RJ, I got to say. RJ, by far, even though his stat line looks nice, by far to me, RJ was the big, biggest disappointment of this game today. But I'm, I keep jumping around. I want to get back to this. This idea that, oh, we're going to be this great defensive team. We're going to lock uh, other teams down, lock them up, and then we're going to win that way. You know, I, I hate to break the news to Tom Thibodeau, but we don't have those kind of players. We don't have lockdown defenders. We don't. So we'd have to play outstanding team defense. But that kind of defense needs someone in the paint to block shots as a deterrent. Taj isn't that. So why? Why lean into that? You, why don't you adjust your scheme so that the offensive players that we have on this team can get cooking on the offensive end and we see it and it's even though it sucks and it shouldn't be that way but there is a direct connection between when offensive players are hitting their shots getting their makes and their effort on the defensive end on the other side matching that intensity but when you have guys who are struggling in these sets, the you know, the, basically we get over the we get over the center line, the three point, uh, the half court line, and it's a lot of dribbling, waiting for Taj to run all the way up, you know, six feet above the three point line to set the pick, and something you know, we had a couple of double picks, but by that point, precious seconds are ticking away on the shot clock, and then often a couple of times we had some twenty four second shower. There were some you know we hoisted shots, bad shots because there was no flow to it. And then when they try to pass, <laughs> because they're kind of like, the spacing isn't quite right. You know, the, the players aren't in the right position to, to get a pass, so they try to force a pass, and, and there's lazy passes. We saw lazy passes by RJ, uh, IQ. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure Burks had any of those, but basically the whole team all around, even Grimes had a moment or two like that. The Defensive intensity on this team is directly connected to offense. That's just the kind of players that we have this time around. Last year was different, and that was last year. That was a totally different team. So I really wish that Tom had been a little more, well, not a little more, a lot more creative in designing the offensive scheme for how we were going to attack this Toronto long and active team who I think is third in the NBA in, uh, in uh, enforcing steals. So when you have a team like that, you have to focus on the offensive end. You have to have an intense focus on holding on to the ball. The word, I'm using the word focus more because the word focus is on defense here. And I think focus should be on offense for this particular team. Of course, the defense is crucial, no doubt. But we've seen many times where the team ends up giving up. And this is what happened today. I mean, the, the, the score wasn't that bad in the first half. Let's see, I forgot exactly what the score was. I think we were only down by, damn. Let's see here, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yes, oh, was something else kind of wild to think. The Knicks scored, we scored 29 points in the third quarter, but allowed 40. So it was, uh, yeah, we were down 11. 56-45. 56-45. Kind of hanging around 11 point. If we'd come out and had a nice little, you know, let's say we strung together, you know, like a 10-0 run or, you know, a 10-2 run, this thing, this game could have been totally different. And then you see, 
you start seeing how you know they it's getting more engaged there's more effort more they become more dynamic on, on the defensive end and also you know when you have guys like fournier on the floor you're not going to get that kind of defensive effort from him and taj you know as you know as amazing as he is for his age he's you know father time is starting to catch up to him he's it's an i think he had another kind of subpar game today for him uh though he did hit a three which was nice he did hit a nice three let's see here yeah seven rebounds two assists he was a minus 17. that's uh that's kind of rough man but 48 was the top scorer for our team four of ten from the three-point line but again i just a lot of sloppy play look at the turnovers see he only had one turnover wow it seemed like he had more but he uh rj had four iq at four Obi Toppin, three blocks today. Obi Toppin had a nice game, man. He had a nice game. 19 points, three blocks, six assists. A career high, six assists. He matched his career high in points, and he had his career high in minutes played. That's right, 45 minutes for Mr. Obi Toppin. I'm happy for him. I'm happy he's getting, uh, you know, the minutes. Unfortunately, they're coming in losses, and that never feels good. Never feels good at all. But look at that, Miles McBride, 15 minutes. Now, one of six, 0 for four. When you look at that, you're like, well, George, you know, he doesn't. He didn't look like he was giving much on the offensive end, which is true. The team, I mean, we still, but interestingly enough, 105 points, that's the most points we've scored, we matched actually since uh, the Christmas Day game against uh, the Hawks. So, you know, we, we had some offense today, just wasn't enough wasn't nearly enough get to this here Siakam uh, man Siakam is becoming a problem again he's having a nice string of games lately uh, Obi uh, I think o o OG Ananubi I think he scored those 14 points all in the first half I don't think he had any of those points in the second half back to this yep the rebounding points in the paint that's all missing Mitch and Randall of course you know Randall you know, he's, he's, he, Randall's a better defender in general than Obi is. Uh, though this season, at times, we've seen him sleep. It's, I don't know, it's, it's such a mixed bag right now. There's, the team is in disarray right now. We're in disarray, even though it's 17, we're 17 and 20, but we're depleted, so it's hard to really judge too much. And, but the point guard situation is going to continue being a problem until we make a commitment to one thing or another. Now, for one, one thing I just want to say, in this situation, when when I originally proposed, I originally proposed swapping the backcourts originally, way back. Derek and Emmanuel quickly start over Kemba and Fournier and have them be the, the bench guys, come off the bench until they kind of work through their stuff. Because I was still hoping at that point that they might actually turn into, get, get back to the level of, of performance that uh, they've displayed throughout their careers, especially in the past three three seasons or so. Well, that didn't happen, so we didn't switch that. And then uh, the Burks thing happened, which uh, was an interesting idea, but it was only short, going to be short-lived. And then uh, Derek, you know, unfortunately he gets hurt, and then Kemba gets, uh, you know, resuscitated. He gives us those few games where he had a little bit of mini resurgence. But then look what happened. The minutes load, now he's out. He could be out indefinitely. Is what I'm kind of hearing. So, so today you're going to start Obi because Randall's out. Why not start the point guard that Obi has the best chemistry with? Why not start quickly? You start Miles, right? Then you pull him after a few minutes. So you didn't even commit to that. Now I get it. We were the game was starting to get out of hand, but maybe. Maybe if you'd gone with IQ, who has chemistry with OB and actually with RJ, this thing might have gotten off to a different start. Now, it still might have had the similar result at the end, but you kind of wasted an opportunity to find out what IQ had. Now, the other proposal I had when um, Derek, uh, you know, unfortunately had to get the ankle surgery, I proposed Ben. I said, hey, why don't we just go and switch the backcourts again, start Deuce and Grimes as the backcourt. 
sounds crazy, right? But I mean, there there are there are they're they're really good defending uh, guards. So why not go with them? It'll give us that defensive punch, and because Randall and RJ would be the uh, the forwards, and we had Mitch. Now without Randall there, that's why I'm saying it makes more sense if Obi starting to have IQ starting. This is the kind of flexibility that and 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 like thinking that Thibs is lacking right now. He's getting too rigid. He's too rigid, even though he is trying different things. It's just not turning into anything interesting in, in terms of discovering things about our players. Now, Grimes has been through a cold spell. He finally broke out of it. He had two uh, three-pointers in the second half. I think he'd gone one for 17 or one for 18. I think he went on that kind of a stretch. Something something, something pretty, pretty bad. Uh, so he finally woke up, which is great. Now, his, his three-point shot's for real, so I'm happy to see that returning. I, I had a feeling this was only going to be a short uh, cold spell, which had happened. And uh, RJ, he actually hit a couple of three-pointers today. He hit two of five. So that's also another bright bright spot there. Uh, Obi's, uh, I think the first three-point attempt he took, he, he hit that, swished it, and then he missed the other three. Uh, the free throws today, finally, because they were atrocious last game, uh, they hit 82.1% of their free throws this time. So that, that was encouraging. What else am I missing that I have not touched on here? I think I touched on everything. All right. Well, this was, uh, this was gonna be a tough win. You know, I just I just wanted them to go out with the with the attitude that we're gonna win this game, doesn't matter who's on the floor. Didn't quite see that, but either way, it was gonna be a tough battle, especially in Toronto away. And this is the fourth game of, of a the last game of a four game road trip. So uh, you know, can cut them a tiny bit of slack in that respect. But I really wish that Thibs had made some different adjustments than the ones that he made. I think he missed an opportunity there. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, so much for watching this. Again, please subscribe, hit the thumbs ups, and drop your comments. I want to hear your feelings about this uh, unfortunate loss. <laughs> uh, we play the Pacers next, so we're coming home. I think we're home for eight of the next ten games or so. So that should be uh, that should be nice. Let's count around: one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're home for seven. Eight, eight of the next 10 games. Ooh, eight of the next 10 games. So this is a chance for us to uh, get healthier. Hopefully we'll get some guys back. We'll get Sims back. Nerlens, because we definitely, I mean, we need some height. We're really hurting for height. And Randall, maybe uh, he'll get back earlier. Uh, be nice to, uh, we need to really take that uh, home and home series against the Celtics that's coming up after the Pacers game. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching this, and I will see you around the Knicksburg.